Okay, today we are going to study some techniques for parameter estimation. And we deal with two methods. One is maximum likelihood, which is a frequentist approach, and the other is maximum a posteriori or MAP estimation, which is based on Bayesian statistics. So first, study the maximum likelihood method for the binomial distribution. So let's suppose we flipped a coin n times, uh, n flips, and uh, let's say we had k heads out of n flips. Then what we want to do is to estimate the probability that that uh, head is obtained. Obtained. So this problem is formulated as a binomial distribution, right? So the probability of k heads uh, k heads out of n flips given the probability of head p is given by this binomial distribution so p to the power of k 1 minus p to the power of n minus k so our problem is to find an optimal value of p yeah. So this n is fixed, k is fixed because it's just an observation from an experiment. So given these experimental results, result uh, how can we determine this parameter p? Obviously, intuitive uh, estimate would be like this: p should be k over n. But is this justified in any way? So one method to determine this p is the maximum likelihood method. So the likelihood in this case is is just this probability. Okay, likelihood is a function of p. So p is unknown, and so this probability of obtaining k heads out of n flips given p is the likelihood. Okay, so this is equal to this. Okay, so in essence, the maximum likelihood is a method to find the optimal value of p by maximizing this likelihood. So this is likelihood. Likelihood function. Likelihood function. So so the estimate, we call this estimate of p, is given by the value of p. So this we write argmax p that maximizes the likelihood function. Okay. So how can we maximize this? Actually, it is easier if we take the logarithm of likelihood. So let's take log of L, so this is natural logarithm. So we have log of n p p to the power of k n minus k. So let's expand this. So log n p. So this is k log p and this is n minus k log 1 minus p. So let's maximize this. So to do this uh, we differentiate this function with respect to p. Okay, so we differentiate this function log l p. So Oh, so sorry, this is not p, this is k. Okay. 
So the first term, this is a constant. This doesn't involve any p, so it's the derivative of this term will be 0. And this term is log p, so k divided by p. And this one, uh, it's n minus k, 1 over 1 minus p, over uh, 1, yeah, minus p. And uh, negative sign is here. So if we differentiate this uh, at the maximum point of this function, it should be 0, right? So the idea is if we plot this function, p and log lp, we would have something like this. Uh, at this point, the derivative should be 0. And the value that gives this maximum is the best estimate because it maximizes the probability of obtaining uh, the observation. Right? So maximizing the probability, maximizing the likelihood gives the best estimate of the probability. Okay, So given this equation, let us solve this. So uh, wait a minute. K over p minus n minus k over 1 minus p equal to 0. So we have 1 minus p k minus n k uh, p to 0. So k uh, k p and n minus kp to 0. So we have p here, p here, and let's move, okay, let's see. So this is minus n plus k minus k, so the k will be cancelled. So we have np equal to 0. From this, we have p equal to k over n. So actually, this coincides with our first guess. You know, after all, this is k heads out of n flips, so it makes sense. So this is the estimate, our best estimate from the experiment according to the maximum likelihood. But why do we, you know, go through all this trouble of maximizing the likelihood? when we can just simply guess the best estimate. Actually, for this simple example, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like worth doing, but uh, in, in practice, this likelihood function can be very complex. In this case, we cannot, we often cannot guess a, a, any optimal value for the probability. Of, for the parameter. But still, we can apply the same logic of maximizing the likelihood. You know, whether we can execute this maximization by hand or by using computer, you know, solving numerically for this equation. So this principle is important. So this is applicable to any problems as long as you can define some kind of likelihood function. Next, let's look at the ma maximum likelihood method for the Poisson distribution. So in this case, suppose we have uh, some samples, observations of numbers that follows a Poisson distribution. Let's say x1, x2, up to xn that follows Poisson distribution. In this case, we want to estimate this parameter of the Poisson distribution mu. Okay. Then, in this case, the you know, for example, x one, this probability will be probability of 
having this x1 given the Poisson distribution this parameter is the mass function for the Poisson distribution of course and mu to the power of x1 and x1 factorial okay so we have this form of uh, function for each of x2 x3 up to xn and they these numbers are assumed to be generated independently so the overall likelihood will be the product of these functions uh, these probabilities so that will be probability of x1 and probability of x2 and up to probability of xn okay to summarize if you you know substitute this kind of uh, uh, mass function after all you have this e to the power of n mu times mu to the power of sum of xi's this i varies from 1 to n and divided by the product of xi factorial okay by the way this product means this so this is pi this is a capital letter of pi this means x1 factorial times x2 factorial times x3 factorial times and up to xn factorial okay so what we did is just multiply all these probabilities so this is the likelihood in this case now again it's easier if we take the logarithm of this likelihood uh, by the way why uh, you know what we want to do is to maximize this one okay but logarithm logarithm function is a monotone increasing function so maximizing this likelihood and maximizing the log of likelihood is the same thing okay log l mu so if we take the logarithm of this we have <coughs> So log of this is negative n mu, and log of this is sum of xi times log of mu, and this is log of pi i and xi factorial. Okay, now let's differentiate this function so with respect to this parameter mu okay so this will be minus n and this one mu is here so we have sum of xi's 1 over mu and this one it's a constant there is no mu here so it's 0 so this is what we have so if we solve this for mu, we have, so multiply both sides by mu, and we have minus n mu equal to sum of xi's. Oh, no, not this one. Not equals plus, equal to zero. So move uh, the negative sign and move this term here, and mu should be uh, sum of xi divided by n. So this is the best estimate, so maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter mu. But what does this mean? What does this mean? This is just uh, just the mean of this sample, right? So, so just it's just average of these numbers. 
So that's mu. And by the way, what is the expectation value of a Poisson random variable? So if x is a random variable that follows the Poisson distribution with parameter mu, what is the expectation value of this? Remember? It's mu. So, the best estimate from the data is just the average. So it makes sense. So this is average, uh, so this is the mean, and this is the mean. So it makes sense. So now we can see that maximum likelihood at least produce very intuitive results, not in contradiction with our intuition. Okay, next we consider the maximum likelihood estimation of normal distribution. So suppose we have observations of numbers x1, x2, up to xn, which we assume to follow a normal distribution. Uh, let's see. Normal distribution with parameters mu and v. Okay, v is actually the variance which you, we usually write sigma squared, but for the sake of simplicity, we write v here. Okay, so in this case, we have two unknown parameters, mu and v. So how can we estimate these parameters from this data? In the case of normal distribution, we have uh, the density function. So the density of density value of uh, x1 in this case in for this normal distribution is this the density function you should memorize this square root of 2 pi and this is v which is the sigma squared so we move uh, put v here inside the square root and exp uh, exponential function and x1 minus mu squared over 2v. So this is the density value of this data. Actually this should this should be considered as a uh, conditional density conditioned on the values of mu and v. Okay. And we have n such numbers so we have the same expression for all these x2 and x3 up to xn. So the likelihood is a function of mu and v. So it's a it's a function of two variables. Is the product of all these densities. Product of all these densities. So rho xi given mu and v. So if you uh, multiply all this for n numbers, what you get is 1 over 2 pi v to the power of n over 2. And this one, it's a product of exponential is exponential of sum, right? So it's this. 1 over 2v sum of uh, xi minus mu squared. Okay, so this is our likelihood function. So, now we want to maximize this function. And as usual, instead of the likelihood itself, we consider the log likelihood. So if we take the log of this, we have minus n over 2 log 2 pi v and exponential of this will come out. 
so that is negative 1 over 2v sum of xi's xi minus mu squared okay this is v okay now we want to maximize this log likelihood and so since this is a two variable function so we take the partial diff derivative log l with respect to mu which is so there's no mu here mu is here so that is what 1 over v sum of xi mu and negative 1 so it's this so this should be 0 and also we differentiate this log likelihood with respect to v okay so what we get is we can ignore this 2 pi here so that will be n 2 o v and for this part we should have plus 2 v squared and the sum of square deviation from the from mu so this should be zero okay now we want to solve these simultaneous equations for mu and v v is here so how do we do that let's see from this first equation we can actually multiply both sides by v so we can get rid of v which would give us so just multiply both sides by v and we have this equal to uh, 0 okay and we split this summation into this minus I mu equal to zero but this mu is a constant there is no i here so we have xi and mu equal to zero so from this we have mu equal to move this here divide by n and we have one over n i from one to n xi which is the average of x actually this mu is supposed to be the expectation value of this uh, normal random variable so so expectation value matches the the sample average it makes sense okay now what about v so let's look at this second equation okay first let us multiply both sides by v squared then we have okay let's see let's move this thing uh, copy and paste okay so let's uh, multiply both sides by v squared then we have n v to v oh actually we can also get rid of this 2 okay so we can get rid of this 2 and we have plus v squared is gone so we have xi minus mu squared equal to 0 so solving this we have v equal to 1 over n sum of xi minus mu squared you know what this is this is the variance so from the previous equation we know that this mu is uh, mu is the sample sample mean so this is this reduces to xi minus x bar 
squared. So this is the sum of square deviation from the sample mean divided by n. So this is the sample variance. Although it is biased sample variance, still it's a sample variance. So after all, we have uh, our maximum likelihood estimate for the parameters is this, 1 over n sum of xi's and parameter v is this xi x bar squared. So these are the maximum likelihood estimate for the normal distribution. So far we have seen the maximum likelihood estimation for uh, binomial distribution and Poisson distribution and normal distribution. But the same principle can be applied to any distributions as long as you can formulate the likelihood function. So however complicated the function is, as long as the function is there, likelihood function is there, you can still maximize that function with respect to the parameters to determine the unknown parameters from the data. So this is a very powerful method for estimating parameters. Now let me explain uh, the maximum a posteriori, a posteriori estimation of parameters. This is very similar to maximum likelihood, but uh, it also involves uh, prior distribution. So this is a very Bayesian idea. So what does this mean, a posteriori? It's a Latin term uh, which is opposite of a priori. So maybe you can guess from these uh, let, uh, words, uh, posteriori corresponds to posterior and a priori corresponds to prior. So in this particular context, prior means before experiment and posterior means after experiment. So in Bayesian statistics, you, you, we need pr prior distribution, right? Before, exper before conducting any experiments, we should have some idea about the data. So that is expressed in terms of the prior distribution. Then after the experiment, we combine the likelihood and prior distribution to produce uh, the posterior distribution. Then in this maximum a posteriori estimation or map estimation, we maximize the posterior probability with respect to the parameters. Okay, first let's uh, review uh, the Bayes theorem. So if we want to estimate the parameter, which is a part of hypothesis, so to speak, so we want to estimate the parameter given data, right? Given data. And, and we use Bayes theorem, which was data and hypothesis and prior distribution and the probability of data. Okay, so in this case hypothesis means uh, the parameters. Okay, so we need prior distribution here. So this is the prior distribution. And this is actually a likelihood. And this term, uh, often called evidence, is actually not necessary. Okay, because it doesn't involve any parameters. What we want to do is maximize this term and uh, this probability with respect to the parameters. But uh, this denominator doesn't involve any parameters, so we can just ignore it. So maximize this then we are just maximizing the numerator. Okay, so we are just 
dealing with the numerator here. Uh, that's uh, likelihood times the prior. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. Now let's consider the problem of uh, map estimation for the binomial distribution. As usual, we flip a coin n times, n flips, and suppose we got k heads out of the n flips. So in this case, the uh, likely, likelihood is this, k given n and probability p, which we don't know, and we want to estimate this value. Okay, so this is binomial distribution, so n choose k, p to the power of k, 1 minus p to the power of n minus k. Okay. So this is the like likelihood, and we need a prior distribution for, uh, for the map dis uh, estimate. And as usual, for the prior distribution of p, we use the beta distribution. Okay alpha, beta, and p to the power of alpha minus 1, or minus p, beta minus 1. Okay, and in this prior distribution, we assume we fix the values for alpha and beta. Okay, so these are constants, some given constants. And you might wonder what values are appropriate for alpha and beta, and actually there is no clear-cut answers for this but uh, so we just assume some constant values for these uh, parameters alpha and beta you know we want to estimate this parameter P and if we introduce this prior distribution we introduce other parameters alpha and beta so that actually makes the problem more complicated at least that's what it seems and if you don't like this, then there is a method to determine appropriate values for alpha and beta more or less automatically. And that's called hierarchical Bayes method. And I, I'm not going to explain this, but uh, if you're interested in, uh, you should check it out. But anyway, let's go back. So we assume this prior distribution. This is prior. And this is likelihood. So the posterior probability for P given the data is proportional to the product of these two things. So probability of obtaining K heads out of N flips times this prior distribution. Okay. So this is proportional to, you know, remember we don't need the evidence, uh, the normalization constant for this because that doesn't contain our parameter p. Okay, so we plug in these uh, functions, but uh, you know, we ignore all the terms that do not contain p. Okay, so for example, uh, this one we don't need. And this one we don't need because they don't contain p. So this would be proportional to p to the power of k, 1 minus p and, and k times uh, p alpha minus 1, 1 minus p beta minus 1. So we have p here and here, 1 minus p here and here. So that is equal to p to the power of k plus alpha minus 1 and 1 minus p to the power of n minus k plus beta minus 1. Okay, so now we want to maximize this posterior probability density function. Okay, but as usual, it's easier if we take the logarithm of this. So log of this row p given k and n 
is k plus alpha minus 1 log p plus n minus k plus beta minus 1 log 1 minus p. Okay, now let's maximize this. To do so, we differentiate this log posterior with respect to p. So d uh, log rho p k n with respect to p. So for this we have k plus alpha minus 1 over p and for this we have n minus k plus beta minus 1 over 1 minus p. So we put this equal to 0 and solve for p. So if you do this, uh, after some manipulation we should have p, so estimate, is k plus alpha minus 1 over n plus alpha plus beta minus 2. So compare this, so this is map estimate, maximum posterior, a post, a maximum a posteriori estimation. And compare this with the maximum likelihood estimate. So that was k over n. So this was maximum likelihood. So obviously, due to the prior distribution, we have some extra terms here the map distribution. Okay, so how does these extra terms affect our estimate? So our map estimate, this one, heavily depends on the values of alpha and beta. So let us see how this estimate behaves depending on these uh, values of alpha and beta. So first case, suppose alpha is equal to beta is equal to 1. So in this case the beta distribution is just a uniform distribution. So p and the density is just 1. Okay. So it's a uniform distribution. So in this case, uh, just put alpha 1 in beta 1, you get the map estimate of k over n, which is the same as the estimate of uh, by, by the maximum likelihood method. So and next, suppose alpha and beta are both equal to 2. In this case, the prior distribution becomes something like this, something like this. So 1, 0, and it takes the maximum value at 0.5. Okay. So in this case, we express our prior knowledge in such a way that this coin is more or less, more likely to be fair. So fair means this dens uh, density is 0.5 but it may be possible that it's it's somewhat biased so the probability except for 0.5 is not zero okay so these are non zero values but more likely to be uh, you know uh, unbiased in this case if you put alpha equal to 2 and beta equal to 2 you get uh, this uh, k plus 1 over n, so 2, 2, minus 2, so that will be plus 2. So the, the estimate is k plus 1 over n plus 2, which is obviously different from k over n. Okay, And the third case, 
Suppose alpha is equal to beta is equal to, they're both equal to 100. Okay, in this case, the beta distribution looks like very concentrated around 0.5. Uh, 0 and 1 and 0.5 is somewhere here so it will look like like this so the probability around here is not 0 exactly 0 but uh, very small and the probability density at 0.5 is very large compared to other regions so this post prior distribution the uh, this beta distribution with these parameters express our idea that the coin is very likely to be unbiased. Okay, so this is our belief, a prior belief before any experiments. Okay, in that case, the map estimate becomes k plus 99 and n plus 190. So this means uh, the results of the experiment influences this estimate very little compared to our initial uh, belief, prior belief. Okay. So for example, uh, in the f in the second case, if we have 10 heads out of 20, uh, 20 uh, flips, then we have 11 over 22, right? 11 over 22. But in this case, if we have 10 heads out of 20, then that will be, what is it? Uh, 10, so 100, 109 over uh, 200, uh, that's 20, so 80, uh, 18. Yeah. So, uh, wait a minute, uh, maybe this is not a good idea. But anyway, so this is mostly determined by our prior distribution. So even if we get something like zero head out of 10 flips, in the case of the second prior, we have, we would have, so zero plus one, 10 plus two, that's one over 12. So this is very close to zero, but in the third case, we have zero plus 99, and 10 plus uh, 198, so that's 99 over uh, 208. So that is still very close to 0.5. So even if we get no heads out of 10 flips, the, our posterior estimate uh, maximum uh, maximum a posteriori estimate is close to 0.5. So our initial belief or uh, the prior distribution uh, affects our estimate after experiments. Okay, you should also try other values like alpha equals to 2 and beta equals to 5 and so on. So what if it's not symmetric? Now, although the values of alpha and beta affect our posterior estimate, map estimate of the probability heavily, uh, if we increase the number of experiments indefinitely, then the values of alpha and beta will not uh, affect the results. Let's see this. So in our example of the binomial distribution, we had this map estimate. Uh, K heads out of n flips will have this estimate, right? n flips alpha plus beta minus 2. 
when so let's let's take some extreme values k and n goes to infinity but the ratio be, uh, of k to n is constant okay so this is not infinity okay so this is bounded then in that case this will be this will approach to k over n. So can you see this? Uh, let's see. Mm, this can be. So let's uh, factor k out in the numerator. So that's one plus alpha minus one over k, and let's factor out n in the denominator. That's one alpha plus beta minus 2 over n. So if you move n and k to a very huge value, then this term and this term, they will converge to 0 because alpha and beta are constants. Okay. Therefore, in the end, it will converge to this value. So after all, when the number of samples when the size of samples is huge the map estimate approaches the maximum likelihood estimate this result holds for uh, any distributions actually so as long as alpha and beta or our prior distribution is not too strange then we shouldn't be worrying about uh, we shouldn't be worried about uh, uh, the result of the map estimate. These are the graphs of evolution of map estimates along the number of flips. So, for example, if we use the prior distribution with alpha equal to 1 and beta equal to 1, and, you know, this is an experiment with a with uh, with uh, uh, exactly unbiased fair coin, okay. Then, for example, after one flip, we had one tail and no head. So, the estimate is this. <coughs> then, after a few thousand flips, it will eventually converge to 0.5. So. This was a symmetric uh, prior distribution, but even if we use a symmetric biased prior distribution, for example, alpha equal to 5 and beta equal to 1, this yellow line, it starts with 0.8, so it's heavily biased towards uh, heads in beginning. However, it will converge to 0.5 as uh, as the number of flips increases. So here is another reason why you shouldn't be too much worried about uh, the prior distribution, as long as you have enough number of experiments. Now let's consider the problem of map estimation for the Poisson distribution. Suppose we have observations x1, x2, up to xn that follows Poisson distribution with parameter mu and this parameter is the one we want to estimate from this data. So uh, so the, the probability mass function for the Poisson distribution is so x1 given mu is exponential of mu and mu to the power of x1, x1 factorial. Okay, So the likelihood is just the product of all these. So likelihood, actually likelihood, let's write likelihood given data. Okay, so the product of all these e mu mu x1 x1 
from, oh, not, not x1, xi, xi. So, you know, in the end, we are not interested in the factors, terms that do not involve mu, so just ignore this. And we consider only the proportionality, okay? So, let's combine this, and we have This will be exponential of minus n mu and mu to the power of sum of xi's. Okay. And what about the prior distribution? Uh, for Poisson distribution, its conjugate prior distribution is the gamma distribution. So we use gamma which has two meta parameters, you know, alpha and beta, they must be positive and must be fixed beforehand, somehow. And the density function for this prior, so this is a prior for mu, so it looks like, uh, so let's consider only the relevant parts, which, so density function is proportional to mu to the power of alpha minus 1 and exponential of beta negative beta mu. So we multiply this and this to get the posterior density function. So given data, so this times this. So e n mu mu sum xi times mu alpha minus 1 e beta mu. Okay. So we have exponential of something times mu, exponential of something times mu here, and power of mu here and here. So let's combine them together to have e to the power of minus n plus beta mu, mu to the power of sum of xi's plus alpha minus 1. Now, we want to, oh, I think this should be not equal, but proportional to, okay? So we want to maximize this posterior probability density function with respect to mu. But, as usual, it is easier if we take the logarithm of this function. Given data, so exponential becomes just a constant, so n plus beta mu here, and plus sum of xi plus alpha minus 1 log mu. Okay, so let's differentiate this one. Uh, not partial, but it's a total differential. Uh, mu given data, d mu. So this part is minus n plus beta over, oh wait a minute. It's not logarithm, so it's just n plus beta. And this part is logarithm, so uh, let's see, sum over mu, so this should be equal to 0. Now let's solve this for mu. So if we solve this for mu, we get, let's see, n plus beta over sum of xi's plus alpha minus 1. So this is the now, wait a minute, is that true? No, 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 <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, it should be opposite, right? So, mu is in the denominator here, so it should be sum of xi plus alpha minus y and plus beta. Okay, that's it. So, compare this with the uh, maximum likelihood estimate which was 
So this is map estimate. And maximum, so compare this with the maximum likelihood estimate, which was this. Okay, this is maximum likelihood estimate. So obviously we have alpha minus 1 here and beta here. So these are the extra terms that comes from the prior distribution. Okay. All right. Finally, let us consider the problem of map estimation for the normal distribution with unknown mean, which is to be estimated, and known variance. For simplicity, we assume that the variance is somehow known, but uh, the mean is not known. So we want to estimate the mean. Okay, so let's say we have observations x1, x2, and so on, xn, which are independent and follows the normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma squared. Okay, now we assume this is known. Okay, so this is a known constant, but we don't know this value, mu, and we want to estimate it from the data. Okay, so for each data we have the density uh, of normal distribution. So <coughs> let's see, we have x1 uh, given mu, actually given sigma squared also. We have this so 2 pi sigma squared inside the square root exponential and x1 minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Okay, so just like in the maximum likelihood, our likelihood function would be given all the data. So the product of all this over all this data. <coughs> so I will skip how to derive it because we already done it. So it will be 2 pi sigma squared to the power of n over 2 and exponential minus 1 over 2 sigma squared and the uh, sum of this. Okay, so since we are assuming that this mu is not known, we need a, need a prior distribution for mu. So, what should be the prior distribution in this case? Actually, it is convenient if we choose the prior as a normal distribution. Again, so just ignoring the constants, this prior distribution which is normal, is proportional to this. Mu, this is the variable, and mu naught. And let's say sigma naught squared. Now, so this mu is supposed to follow a normal distribution with some parameters, right? So these are somehow uh, fixed. And by multiplying this and this, we get the posterior distribution. And we just multiply and, and uh, take the logarithm directly. So we have the posterior of mu given data, uh, which is equal to this. You should check. You should derive this yourself. And xi minus mu squared minus 1 over 2 sigma naught squared mu mu naught squared plus constant. Okay. Constant means something that do not involve mu. Okay. 
then as usual we differentiate it with respect to mu d mu so that will be well this is actually an exercise so just differentiate this with respect to mu so this constant will be gone and uh, equate it with zero and solve for mu then you should get mu equal to this xi over sigma squared mu naught over sigma naught squared over n sigma squared plus uh, naught squared now so this is the map estimate of mu when sigma is known okay compare this with the maximum likelihood estimate of mu so in maximum likelihood mu was estimated as this xi over n so this is maximum likelihood estimate so we have these terms from the prior so if we ignore this then this sigma squared will cancel out and we have the same result as the as the maximum likelihood method so what if we don't know the value of sigma then we assume some kind of prior distribution for sigma squared and then uh, consider this uh, posterior probability as a function of two variables mu and sigma squared then differentiate with respect to each of the variables and solve them to find some uh, solution mu and sigma squared well that is a, a little bit involved but uh, it's doable and you should try to find out so that's an advanced exercise so actually we did we saw this problem in the previous uh, chapter in the previous chapter we assumed a prior distribution for sigma for sigma it was proportional to 1 over sigma right remember so you can use this but actually you know, of course sigma is positive actually this uh, kind of density function is not appropriate as a density function because it doesn't converge it does you know if you integrate this from 0 to infinity this will go to infinity no it was diverge so this is not this cannot be a proper density function but actually it's okay as long as it works it's fine so yeah you should try it if you want to try